welcome everyone to TechAbilities webinar today on scanning pens, scan, listen and understand. Today we'll be uh, going through scanning pens with uh, Geraldine Bell and Julia Clouter. Uh, we'll have questions at the end, so if there's anything that you think that you want to ask, then feel free to pop it in the chat pane and we'll have a bit of time at the end to go through that. Just a reminder that TechAbility runs regular webinars and we have a YouTube channel uh, where these will all be saved. So you can view these and you can share them with your colleagues and use them as a resource. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over and we'll get started. Hello, good afternoon everybody and thanks for joining the Scanning Pens webinar this afternoon. Um, I hope you can all see my screen and my name's Geraldine Bell and I'm UK College Sales Manager for Scanning Pens. So we'll just get going in a few minutes. Okay, so over the next 20 minutes or so, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about us as a company, um, introduce you to our products, look at some key features and benefits, some research and studies, and best practice and tips, and then I'll hand over to Julia Clouter, our Head of Education, and Senko. So just to tell you a little bit about us as a company, um, we've been established for over 15 years now. We have two offices in the UK, so I'm presenting out of our University of Wolverhampton campus today. We also have an office in Bath, we have an office in the States, Canada, Australia, and we've recently opened up an office in India as well. We have a really close working relationship with a C pen, they manufacture our pens and we listen to what our customers want. So we have software updates a couple of times a year. So if you do invest in our pens, you can also download software later on in the year for any new updates and that's absolutely free. We do supply internationally. We're supplying thousands of schools, colleges and universities throughout the world allowing thousands of students to access and use our reader pens. So our pens allow students to access printed text discreetly and hear words aloud. The two main reading aids are, what you see on the screen now is our exam reader pen, so that's the brightly colored orange pen, that's been approved for use in exams. And then our white pen is what I like to call our day-to-day -day reader pen. So all pens are battery operated. I like to say treat it like a mobile phone, charge it up overnight and then you get eight hours battery life on them. You can instantly scan words, lines or text and the reader pen includes two dictionaries, the Oxford Primary and the Collins Dictionary and has up to 240,000 definitions. So they're ideal for people or students with reading difficulties such as dyslexia, they might be partially sighted, or perhaps they're learning English as a second language. So the main reader pen will allow you to scan text to speech. It includes the two dictionaries. The good thing about this pen as well, um, if students want to capture data from a book, it will allow them to scan and store it onto the pen. They can then connect up to an external device, it might be a laptop, they can up, up, up a Word document perhaps, and then they can upload whatever they scan and save it. It's also got a voice recorder. This is quite useful if they want to record a lesson perhaps, or perhaps they just want to send themselves a message to remind them that their project or assignment's got to be in next, next week. So it's quite useful for students perhaps with short-term memory loss as well as it recording messages that they can listen to later. All of our pens have settings, um, so it allows them to change it from left to right-handed. And you can also, now this is down to sort of students' personal preference, they've got a word pause, punctuation pause. The reader pen also includes a monolingual dictionary, 
so it will read French and Spanish languages as well and you've also got a word zoom so that might just be a word that a student wants validation on or perhaps they just want to see how it's pronounced again and they can listen to that as many times as they wish. Now I did have a little video here but I'm going to skip by that and we're going to forward you the videos later because we may have issues with the sound. But if I take you onto the exam reader, um, this will save institutions time and money. It will enable all students to reach their full potential and it eliminates the need for a human reader. The students of a certain age are not always comfortable with having a human reader and the good thing about this pen, it is fully inclusive and will allow them to sit in an exam hall with everybody else and sit a paper-based exam. It has been approved by JCQ, so it's been stripped down of all its functionality, but the most important thing is it will scan and read the questions to the students. It doesn't have a dictionary in it or a thesaurus, but it does have the settings so that students can change it to their own personal preferences to listen to and hear the questions aloud. So if we look at the exam reader in more detail, it will simply just scan the questions and allow students to listen to those questions during exam hall. All our pens complete, come complete with a charger and earphones, so they're not going to disturb anybody else if they're sat in the same exam room. And the settings will allow them to change it to left and right-handed. So as I say, it's been exam approved. This pen will also read Spanish, French, German and Italian. So it's quite useful for students who may be studying or sitting exam papers in those languages. And as I say, you've got settings which will allow them to have the word pause and the read delay. And it will allow the students to listen and hear those questions as many times as they wish. Um, I speak to a lot of exam invigilators. They'll sit in an exam hall with students and students won't even pop the hand up to ask a question. This will allow them to read the question as many times as they wish and listen to it over and over until they actually understand it. So at the moment, um, the most common alternative, shall we say, to these pens is potentially a human reader. It'll be the most expensive solution for yourself and issues at this time of year, I know we've just come to the exam, end of the exam period for GCSE and A-levels, but you may have had issues whether you had enough readers, how much is that going to cost, and then just simply finding rooms to accommodate these students and putting them in a separate room. Um, you may use computer readers, but then you have to strip down um, the computers as well, turn the dictionaries off, and then again you've got the problem with rooms. I've been around a lot of institutions at the moment and they've actually had to close college down for a week to accommodate access arrangements and exams for students. So these pens, as I say, will allow the students to sit in the exam hall with everybody else and make it fully inclusive for them. So for them, you know, they, they don't like having a separate room. Most students don't like having a human reader. They'll probably ask the question, why am I being put in a separate room? So it's all about their own self-esteem, their own confidence. And at the end of the day, you're preparing them for their transition either onto higher education or indeed a workplace environment. Again, I'm going to skip this video here, but it's a really good video from the University of Limerick which I will forward on to you after this webinar today. So the benefits of both pens, it's going to increase the student's independence and confidence. It will allow them to access printed text anytime, anywhere. And I think the really important thing to point out is that you don't require Wi-Fi for these pens. As long as they're charged up, you'll get eight hours life on them. It will allow students to access printed text anytime, anywhere, and listen to it. It will allow them to sit in the exam hall with everybody else, listen to the questions over and over. It will improve their reading comprehension, improve academic performance, and as I say, makes it socially inclusive. And it will reduce exam costs. Our pens are 200 pounds each. They come as individual units, or you can buy in classroom sets of 10. And the other pen that we have um, is our dictionary pen. This is useful for students that are perhaps 
learning English and it supports up to nine languages including Chinese, French, German, Italian, Russian and Spanish. This pen works very much the same. It will translate single words. So a student would simply scan a word and then it will tr translate that particular word for them. So it also includes the dictionaries, the scanter file, the recorder, and then settings as on the previous pen will allow them to set their personal preferences and change it from left to right-handed. So this screen just shows hints and tips. It displays our three pens. So the white pen, as I say, is our day-to-day -day reader pen. It's got full functionality on it. It's got storage, it's got the recorder, it's got the dictionaries. The brightly colored orange one is the exam reader pen. That will just simply scan text to speech. And then for anyone learning languages, you may be interested in the dictionary pen. There are ways of holding the pen. I always say hold it as upright as possible and hold it down at the base of the pen. If any of you are using our pens, you'll already know that once you um, select text to speech, the light will come on once it hits the paper and the students are ready to go and hear the words aloud. So um, on this screen, it just shows you some of the customers that we're already working with. Um, for NATSPEC members, I know South and City College Birmingham, um, and NATSPEC members as our Shipley College. Most of our FE colleges are, are utilising um, the exam reader pen. Leeds City College have just done a study and are using it in the GCSE exams. They had over 7,000 students come through um, last September that were resitting maths and English GCSE. Out of those 7,000 students, there were 1,500 students that required access arrangements, and the most predominant requirement was dyslexia. So they've invested and rolled out our exam reader pens, and it's a similar story in the other colleges as well. Gateshead College rolled out exam reader pens last year, and Bradford College have rolled out exam reader pens and are investing in more pens this month and colleague Landrillo, again, they've invested in the exam reader pens as well. So my next couple of slides just shows you um, some comments and sort of testimonials from other colleges. So Wiltshire College, I've just highlighted on here um, what they've said is they talk about removing barriers, promoting confidence, independent students, and it's creating them and helping them remove barriers to be successful adults once they transition from further education or go on to higher education and a workplace environment. A student reported at Wiltshire College that they find the reader pen is amazing. They had difficulty in keeping information in their brain and so the pen has helped them free their mind so that they can quickly scan, listen and understand. And Bradford College, as I say, they've rolled out the exam reader pen. It provides read, read, readal accessibility duty. Minimal training is needed. It negates the need for learning assistance or a reader in class so whether a student is okay to use a pen. It negates the need for readers, separate rooms and invigilators. So they're saving a huge amount of money. As I say, the exam reader has been approved by JCQ, so you don't require access arrangements. It just needs to be the student's normal way of working. So as an organization, we fully support you. We offer free trials. So if any of you are interested in trialing a pen, I'm not sure you'll have any students that are remaining in college at the moment, but we can set up trials for the start of September. I can come on site, or one of my colleagues can, to train you. We will have lots of case studies that we can share with you. I will forward on the videos that we hope to share with you today, and we can also run live webinars as well, very much like we've done now. Um, I'm going to hand you over now to um, our Head of Education, Julia Clouter. Okay, just one moment. Hi, thank you. My name's Julia and um, I'm with Scanning Pens as Head of Education and it's a real pleasure to be asked to come and talk at this webinar today. 
Um, my background is as a Senko. I've been a teacher for a very, very long time, uh, more than 20 years. And during that time, I've worked in crews, both primary and secondary, and worked with students who have uh, some significant behaviour difficulties and also young people uh, with a whole range of difficulties during my career. So this uh, post that I hold here with scanning pens, it's fantastic because I can bring the benefit of a lot of experience to the role. So I know that uh, you are listening in because you are uh, probably thinking about your students who have got more complex needs today. So I will be more than happy to answer any questions about how the scanning pens products might be appropriate for uh, the youngsters, the learners that you teach. Um, and also just to talk through ways that we have seen the product working um, to give you some idea of how, uh, how effective scanning pens can be. So, my role here again, I do an awful lot of things at Scanning Pens. One of the things that I do is create resources um, and so if you are interested in receiving resources to support the implementation of the Scanning Pens at your um, college or workplace even, I am happy to start looking at what we can provide for you because I know sometimes it's tricky to work out how to get started. I also produce uh, newsletters, I regularly blog, I think there are three blogs a, a month that go up onto our Succeed with Dyslexia uh, website, uh, offering on-demand webinars if you need some additional support and as Geraldine says we're more than happy to come in and provide staff training. So let's just think briefly about dyslexia. We know that uh, many of our learners do have dyslexia. It's a surprising number. And if you then sandwich that together and think about the other difficulties that they might be experiencing, because we know that dyslexia doesn't exist in a vacuum. It usually exists with other difficulties. So if you happen to be left-handed, you'll already know how difficult the world can be for you. You don't necessarily put your hand on a left-handed pair of scissors immediately. You have to rattle through the drawer and try and find an appropriate tool. Um, you know that even just the way that doors open make things difficult for you. So if you have got a combination of uh, dyspraxia, dyslexia, you also happen to be left-handed. Uh, you are going to find the world quite a tricky and frustrating place. Sadly, there are less than a third of the population receiving the specialised support that they need, particularly in schools. Yes, we can get out the tray of left-handed scissors, but that's not going to meet all the needs of those students. It's just a drop in the ocean of trying to meet those needs. And the thing that I really like about scanning pens is that they have been made to be highly usable for people who have difficulties. So I'm thinking about uh, slow speed of processing. There's a function in the pen where you can slow down the speed of playback, which is really helpful. Also, punctuation pauses. Very often we know that if you have a slow speed of processing, it's helpful just to give yourself that time. Scanning pens also can play back as many times as you want it to, to help you to feel secure in that information. And brilliantly, it'll switch from right-handed to left-handed. So you're helping those left-handers out as well. Dyslexia, we know that it affects so many people and it doesn't discriminate. Anyone can have dyslexia and a lot of people hide it and I know that because I have something called dyscalculia um, and struggled with some dyslexia issues when I was at school. My dyscalculia is quite profound. Uh, maths is my kryptonite. I find it very, very difficult indeed um, and I develop lots of strategies to hide it brilliant strategies because I'm incredibly creative and that's one of my uh, dyslexia superpowers. We know that uh, if you happen to have a, one of the difficulties within the range of dyslexia, you may well have some brilliant coping strategies to manage that and you might be uh, really good at other skills. 
And it's really important to know that because when you're at school or college, the thing that you feel most of all when you're presented with a learning task is a sense of despair and frustration that you can't actually grapple with the task that's in front of you. We know that it's neurodevelopmental. We believe that it's genetic. We know that it's not the result of poor parenting or poor teaching. And having been that teacher of the dyslexic student, who never seemed to respond to the strategies that I put in front of them. And I knew I was doing my absolute best for that student. It can be uh, really disheartening, but it's, it's not that. If you can have some good tools and some good strategies, it is possible to move young people with dyslexia on. But more importantly, it's really helpful if you can find the things that they are good at and help them celebrate their strengths and encourage them to learn the way that they need to, the way that they want to, which may be completely different to the other learners in the class. Dyslexia is pretty unique and uh, it requires a fairly unique solution from teachers and from the supports and resources that we provide. So if you are dyslexic and you are grappling with a task in the classroom, it is going to make you feel really tired. It makes your eyes hurt. It makes your brain hurt. It causes brain fog. Uh, and that brain fog can then make you feel very low. Um, I think students tend to go three ways, really. And it falls into the fight, flight, or freeze pattern. Um, as a student, I was a fighter. I used to get into terrible arguments with my teacher. Um, then I became a flighter. When I knew that I had a maths lesson, I could generally be found in the toilet because that's where I would run to, to get away from maths. And the students who freeze, you know them because they've usually got their head on the desk. They're exhausted, they're tired, and they don't want to engage in the lesson or they just got that state of brain fog so much that they can't, just can't engage. It's tiring. And in when you're watching your peers get along um, and you realise that you're not making the same kind of progress or that you have to put in huge amounts of effort in order to make the same kind of progress as your peers, that is going to have an impact on your self-esteem. If we don't get our messages right for young people, that can result in low aspirations. And interestingly, scanning pens have been conducting some research around uh, the prison population and there are some quite startling results about the numbers of people who um, end up in prison who don't have levels of literacy that are at an age of 11 and above. It's a huge proportion. I can't think of the, the number right now but I will certainly put that information onto the um, links afterwards just believe me it's it's huge literacy um, is a huge issue if you can't get yourself into learning if you can't engage with learning in the workplace you are at a serious disadvantage and if your self-esteem is very low then unfortunately the possibility of you being groomed to get into situations where you are then engaged in criminal activity is fairly high the other issue that we have with students in school, and I've met this at the proofs that I taught in, is an absolute dislike of learning. Uh, it's almost as though if you um, can't do the reading, if you don't like doing the reading, you turn that self-message into dislike, even hatred, to get to the point where I've taught students who will not put their pen to paper, who will not engage with the written word. and it's um, got to a point where they become uh, so passionate and energized about disliking the act of reading and learning. And I would say to those students, if only you put that energy into perseverance and trying, because I can help you and I've got some tools to help you with. So I'm going to talk a little bit about perseverance in a little while because I think it's really, really important, an essential skill to be thinking about when talking to our young people who do have uh, learning difficulties that sit together that make the business of education really tricky. So I said there was a lot of people with dyslexia. Yep, 10% of the population. We've got 12% who are left-handed. We haven't got lots of support and we've got the comorbidity. And comorbidity, I'm talking about dyslexia, dyspraxia, 
dyscalculia, all the discs essentially sitting together which are hard to pull apart, but they often sit together with other difficulties like ADHD or OCD and ASD. This business of comorbidity makes life very difficult and it makes it difficult for, for teachers to unpick what they're seeing in front of them. I know that um, many of you will have students that you come across and it takes a long time to work out what the learning need is to get past what you are seeing and actually put the right learning pathways in front of them. It's tricky. So I'm just going to share with you a few strategies now that I've used with uh, students. I'm thinking now specifically about my students in primary proofs, but when I was at a, a really wonderful uh, meeting recently called SEMMAC in London, um, which was an assistive technology meet at Charlton School, and I met some of the young people there. Um, there was a large number of students with PMLD and a large number of uh, young learners who were within that autistic spectrum and to to a man they made a beeline for my sensory box so in my sensory box there you can see it's bright it's colorful there's loads of really nice things inside there um, it's a box that can be used it could be used in the classroom or as a breakout tool um, some students, they just need to go and take a bit of time and go to the safe space and have a bit of time with things in the sensory box in there. There's lovely textures. There's a nice friendly toy with big eyes that you can look at. Um, if you're thinking specifically about an individual and you know the things they like, put the things in the box that you know that they like. So if you've got someone who loves playing with a bit of Lego, give them a Lego task in there. If you know that they are someone who actually enjoys reading when they reach that point of calmness, it's really helpful to put a favorite book in or even a picture book that's just going to help them to feel their um, sense of calm returning because when you're at that flight stage, you're breaking out, you want to run. Another great way of making up a sensory box is to have a reward conversation with students. Um, if you've got a budget for it or you're working with parents, that's great because you can have that conversation along the lines of, well, what should we put into your sensory box? Ah, oh, you really wanted a, a rainbow key ring. Great. Okay. Well, if you're doing really well, we can work towards that. Now, I know um, this might not apply to some of your students, but it, it may well apply to some of the young people that you know that you can help to put together that sensory box so that when they have their breakout time, they want to use that. Another idea for a sensory box and a great way of using the scanning pen is to put messages in there. So um, you can see just at the side of the box, I've got a card and it's got a strategy on there that says something like, um, when you're feeling anxious, take some time to breathe deeply and take a calming moment. We'd really love you to come back into the classroom or learning environment. We're still really positive about you and we want you to come back. So you can put really nice positive messages into a box like this. And the other thing to think about with a scanning pen is that there's a dictaphone function. So if you wanted to record a really me lovely message for one of your students to support them, um, they could take that away and have a listen to it. And there is nothing so supportive as that personalized message that they can play back and listen to in that moment where they're having some you know frustration i really believe that reading is a bridge back to the classroom when a student has escalated to the point where they've lost their ability to focus and learn um, so i'm calling this the reading bridge if you get a student to a point where they can engage with reading and use their scanning pen in order to do that, you are more than halfway to getting them back to the classroom. You've achieved a level of calm and focus where learning can happen again. So it might be an appropriate strategy for you, the sensory box. Um, it's got potential for use with the scanning pen and just have a think about how that might work in your setting. There's different ways to make them. I would say the box that you're looking at on the screen is a, a primary strategy, but you might think of other things that you would like to put in a sensory box. So I'm just gonna think now about um, readers and reader pens. And I know that Geraldine touched on this a little bit earlier, but I'm gonna come at it from a slightly different angle. And I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of young people who are perhaps sitting somewhere on that autistic spectrum 
where um, sorry phones ringing my ear that confused me so somewhere on the autistic spectrum where um, they might find interacting with a human reader a real challenge and you know that that student has got the capacity to answer all of those questions brilliantly but actually the human reader is going to contribute to their um, lack of confidence their lack of ability to cope in that exam situation so I just wanted to reiterate that for young people who have um, or for your learners who have already established a routine where they've been using their everyday white reader pen in class there is no great switch over to the orange exam reader because they are already within a routine of scanning for comprehension and they know how that works it's just a color a color switch and you can prepare those young people for that there's no variable like you get with a human reader I might be really worried about um, someone who's coming in to be my reader for a reason that you might not fathom it might be because they've got brown hair and I've got a problem with someone with brown hair it, there are things sometimes that we just don't understand reasons why students struggle if you haven't got that variable you've not got that human reader in the room you remove all of those problems of anxieties that that can bring there's also a sort of a natural anxiety if you're dyslexic or someone who just does not want to have to engage with another human to say I don't understand this word it might be a simple word and you're going to feel shame about having to get that support and help and I think shame is a really big issue um, that we need to think about you can get immediate support there's no need to wait the pen will play back to you immediately the word that you need you can have it repeating as many times as you want and it's it's fairly easy to be discreet with a reader pen if you're setting up an example I would suggest you take your students to the back of the hall or if they are right-handed with a reading pen put them on the right hand side so that you can keep that activity um, minimal from other students because we know that uh, if you feel that you're under the spotlight and you feel that people are looking at you that can also have an impact on your ability to achieve your best when you're in exams so best way to use reader pens and scanning pens is to make it flow through the year ensure that that support happens all the way through uh, my advice would be to start with the white everyday reader pen and then have your back bank of exam pens for use during those examinations and that's a great way of supporting it also means that if you've been using them over a longer period of time uh, you've had that opportunity to really adapt the pen and personalize it so that it will support the needs of the individual student and you know it's the simplest thing in the world just to put a sticky label on the back with that student's name on if you're taking the pens in of an evening and charging them up for the students but you know it's really great if they can take them home and use them at home for homework too because we know that it helps to build all of that uh, comprehension and confidence and use of the tool so let's just go back and I'm going to speak just briefly now about perseverance because I think it's really really important um, perseverance isn't a habit that our young people and our learners have necessarily got because we live in a very fast quick fix world and when we're used to getting a quick fix on things perseverance dissolves but it's um, something that I would really suggest that you discuss regularly with your students it's a good thing if you can have students talk about it together and perhaps identify when they're feeling less able to persevere successfully and what their strategies are so there are two conversations here what do you do when your learning confidence breaks down what's your pattern of behavior and then what do you need to do in order to change so that you can um, put the effort in and retain that learning pattern that you're on and if you can get students to do that gosh please do reward them and comment on their effort talk about the effort rather than the attainment because students need to know that you are watching them do really well and that helps build confidence like nothing else I think it's um, really helpful if you get them to think about questions like 
How did you feel when you? When you wanted to give up, what did you do? What made you keep going? Did you find yourself saying, I'm no good at? What was your internal dialogue? What kind of conversation did you have with yourself? What did it feel like when you gave up and you saw other people continuing? When somebody else completed the activity, how did that make you feel? I think these are really important things to have those discussions about because it's shaping your learner's approach to learning and it's shaping how resilient they are and their stickability for the tasks that you present them with. So I think please have those discussions and I would be really interested to know if you have got students who are using reader pens, how they are using those reader pens in those discussions and perhaps they might be able to give you some feedback about how it might be supporting their perseverance because we're finding from our case studies that our learners who are engaging and using our reading pens are actually engaging for much longer on learning tasks than those without. So I would be very interested in your feedback too about how uh, reader pens are being used successfully. And again, please get in contact with Geraldine or talk to myself. We're more than happy to come in and have those discussions and those supportive conversations with you. We're really happy to come in and look at your specific situation, see if we can tailor some resources and some ideas about how you can get the best of this resource. So I think that's going to wrap this up for me. Um, let me just check to see I haven't got any more slides. No, I haven't. We've got lovely thank you slides here. And you'll see that Geraldine's um, email address is there. My email address is julia at scanningpens.com. I just encourage you, please get in touch. We're more than happy to talk about anything that you might have heard through the presentation today. And this is your opportunity now. If you've been holding on to that question, if you've got that burning thought that you want to get answered, uh, please let us know and we're happy to uh, join you with the chat or to support your answers now. I'm going to hand over uh, to Neil now. if if I can, so that you can join back us in at the end of the webinar, Neil. Can you see any questions that I can't see? Great. Thanks, Geraldine. Um, <clears throat> just one that I had recently um, is, um, I, I think you mentioned this uh, research around, um, you were talking about kind of support in lessons and things like that. <clears throat> is there any, are there any good links or things that you can kind of share with us as, as what, what's good kind of research around this? Yes, absolutely can. Um, on the Scanning Pens website, um, yeah. if you go to readapen.com, there are a whole stream of case studies that can support um, and a lot of them, we're actually in the process at the moment of creating a matrix of information so that if you wanted to know specifically about um, how the dictionary pen has been used or within a case study or specifically about EAL students, there will be a matrix that will be available. There's also the Leeds City College um, and I know that we can provide a link for that. There's also um, a Ayrshire and Bradford uh, study that we would like to draw your attention to that has got some really good supporting evidence. Okay, great. That's really interesting. I think um, one of the uh, one of the things that um, is going to be quite interesting is the ed tech policy that the government are bringing forward now, um, and there's a there's a chance to set some standards about all classrooms having these this type of uh, technology. So I think it's a really good time um, to kind of share this. So I'll make sure that that's passed on. Yeah, thank you. It is. It's really exciting times, isn't it? I do feel like uh, this this revolution that didn't seem to happen for ever such a long time. We're on the cusp. It's happening now. EdTech is yeah. absolutely uh, bubbling to the top. And I think schools that don't engage in the process of engaging with uh, EdTech support for students are going to just end up getting so far behind they don't catch up it's important for for students in the world that we're living in now it's a it's a technology time 
and um, we've got to make sure that our young people are digital natives, I would say, and we need to make sure we give them the tools so that they can be really successful using the tools that they use all the time. Great. Um, we've also got another question. Is it easy to link the pen to a PC or tablet so that the scan yes. text can be accessed? Brilliant question. Yes, it can be. It is just as easy as putting the USB cable into the computer and the other end into the pen. So if you wanted to scan to file, you would plug in and then if you've got the text in front of you. So I'm now imagining um, perhaps a university student um, who has got uh, a book and they want to lift something straight out of the book and put it straight onto the file. Bosh. As long as your cursor is flashing, you can drop that information straight into any document that's got a flashing cursor. So that's helpful. And the other thing that's interesting is that um, if you've got young people who are going into libraries or you've got researchers, you can actually store, you can scan to the pen huge amounts, whole books if you wanted to. So you can Sorry, I think your your microphone has just cut out and I'm not sure why. Upload. Oh. Are you there still? Did yes, sorry, I, I think we just lost you for a moment. I don't know if everyone lost you, but could you just repeat the last little bit that you said? Yes, it was just to say that if you happen to be in a, a library or a place where you wanted to take the information, you can scan directly into the pen. You don't need to be attached to a computer. You can just take that. Uh, it, it could store a book. There is a lot of memory on that pen. So you can scan, scan it to file on the pen, and then later when you get to your computer, you can then upload in exactly the same way, link the pen to the computer and put it straight into a Word document. Okay, great. And um, we've got another question. Uh, hi there, thinking specifically of exams, can you just clear up the JCQ guidelines? Can the orange pens be used for a reader arrangement or just read aloud? If they can be used in, lo in lieu of a human reader, can you use them in the reading sections of GCSE exams? I think the answer to all of those is yes. Um, with the orange exam reader, the JCQ have said for GCSE exams, um, that pen can be used for all exams. You don't need an access arrangement for it. You don't need to fill in the form eight. If it is the student's normal way of working, it can just go into that examination, which is fantastic news. It really is. Um, great. So does that mean that they can use them in the reading sections of GCSE exams? I think that was the last that's part. That's correct. Yes, that's absolutely right. The only section of uh, a reading exam where the pen can't be used is in SATs currently for the reading section of the SATs, but that is the only, to my knowledge, the only bit of examination that is a JCQ approved examination where it cannot be used. So that's at the SATs in all other circumstances for the English paper for reading papers, GCSE, yes, absolutely, go ahead and use the pen. Okay, great, thank you. So thank you for the questions, everyone, and um, thank you, Geraldine, um, and Scanning Pens as a whole for, for a really interesting webinar. Okay, well, thank you ever so much for having us and for inviting us. It's been really great. Look forward to perhaps doing this again sometime. Yeah, great, <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much. All right then, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to leave the screen on the uh, tech ability uh, details right now. Um, so if you want to contact us, you can uh, email us at neil.beck at natspec.org.uk. Um, so particularly if there's something you've been interested in today, then get in touch. Um, our Twitter is at tech underscore ability one. And we have our webinar channel there. And if I show you what this looks like, uh, let me go through to the webinars. And then you've got all the webinars that we've previously delivered along the right hand side there. Um, so soon afterwards, this webinar will be uploaded there. So you can share it, you can use it for CPD and anything else. Um, so if there's no further questions, 
then I'll finish it there. Thank you everyone for attending and uh, have a good day. Thank you, bye.